This is our planet. There are 7.4 billion of us on this planet, including me and you. Today, most of us in the Western world live a modern lifestyle that revolves around technologies. We drive a lot of cars, fly a lot of planes, and flying even higher are a lot of satellites that enable us to go online with our phones. If we get hungry, we open up an app to order a pizza made from ingredients from all over the world. And if we do get sick, possibly from eating too much of that pizza, we can call a cab to take us to the hospital so the doctors can fix us up with some marvel of modern medicine that we probably can't even pronounce. In many ways, this is a pretty good life. To put things in perspective, for over 90% of our history, we lived by hunting and gathering and running away from predators. And if we were to get sick from eating, say, rotten berries, we had no hospitals to go to and could end up dead. So in comparison to the world of our ancestors, this modern world that we've built with the help of technology is truly awe-inspiring. But this modernity also comes with a dark side. The same technologies behind the making and delivery of those delicious pizzas are also poisoning our planet and destroying our ecosystem. And those pizzas themselves? But half of us are too poor to afford them, and the rest of us are getting heart diseases from them. And as we become more virtually connected than ever, we're being driven apart in real life. And the most crazy thing is that these problems, huge that they might be, are solvable problems. By that, I mean all of us can envision solutions to them. So why aren't we doing anything? Are we too busy making money to care about our planet? Are we too busy bickering and fighting to care about starving children? That doesn't make any sense to me because the last time I checked, compassion and empathy are still highly valued by most human beings. And I'm not going to blame ignorance of technology either. We all know what's going on in the world because we all have the internet. And until I actually meet a Terminator in real life, I'm going to maintain that we, human beings, are the creators, users, and stewards of technologies. So whatever destruction and suffering that is happening in the world, it's on us. Now, I don't want to belittle these huge problems we're facing collectively. They're not simple and they're not straightforward. And I do want to recognize that many of us are working hard to solve them. But for every one of us that are engaged in these issues, there are tens or hundreds or more of us that just don't seem to care very much. And this lack of caring, this apathy, lies at the root of our collective inaction. Apathy happens when we run away from our empathy and vulnerability. We do this because we find it too painful to watch children starve, because we find it too shameful to admit that our lifestyle is choking our planet, and because we're too afraid that we may fail even when we try our best. So we pretend not to see. We convince ourselves that somebody else is going to sort it all out. How does this work exactly? Let's say I'm an engineer. I know there are these huge problems in the world, but they're so complex I have no idea how to start working on them, and I have no idea if I can really make a difference. So instead of trying, I tell myself that, well, I'm only one engineer, and I can't change the world all by myself. Then I go back to my comfort zone and work on the next gadget. Maybe it's an app that delivers pizza faster and cheaper. And maybe I would even kind of pat myself on the back that I'm working on something that's going to make some people's life better and that the pizza app makes me a decent, caring human being. But beneath the facade of that self-satisfaction, there's going to be nagging doubts. Maybe I haven't tried as hard as I could. Maybe my app is contributing to a transportation system that's killing our planet. Maybe the pizza my app delivers is contributing to an unhealthy way of life that's killing through diabetes and heart disease. Apathy is a willful choice. It's an act of cowardice. And the antidote is courage. The word courage comes from the French word cur. It means heart. If we're to tackle these huge, complex problems that we have, we need to start by learning to listen to our hearts. It means to empathize with the pain and suffering all around us, even if it makes us feel vulnerable. It means to embrace our responsibility in creating them, even if that makes us feel ashamed. And by listening to our hearts, 
will recognize what is truly unacceptable about this world, and that will become the source of our courage. The problems facing humanity are huge and complex, and most of us don't even know where to begin working with them. They're intimidating and rightfully so. But courage isn't fearlessness. Courage is trying even if we're afraid. Trying even if we don't know how. Trying even if we might fail. Courage is standing up to the status quo and saying bye to our comfort zones because our hearts desire a better world. Remember that engineer in the earlier example? That used to be me. I wasn't making a piece of app, but I stayed in my technical silo because it was comfortable, because it was safe. Then three years ago, I became the father of this beautiful girl, and I could no longer pretend to not see what's going on in the world. My baby daughter became the source of my courage. I do my best to make a difference every day because I want to be able to look in her eyes and know that I've done my best to give her a better world. And I'm not alone in this. There are many of us out there already doing their best every day to make a difference in the world. And that's because courage is in our DNA. That's because to have courage is to be human. What about you? What will you do?